Hello, another uh, quick little video from the Anger Photographer here. Um, if you're interested in doing uh, time exposures and, uh, you know, experimenting around with those, I'd uh, like you to think about taking a look at certain objects that you can use as paintbrushes. I mean, your canvas is your sensor at the back of your camera. Um, here's a nice little device. It uh, comes with a remote. You can actually buy it at a hardware store. You can link multiple ones together. Um, they're silicone coated uh, LEDs. Uh, each little cell is an RGB cell. You can uh, comes with a little remote here and there's a little infrared trigger over there. If I just want to use one LED, what I'll do is I'll actually cover the rest of these up with uh, black duct tape. But you're actually able to combine the colors to uh, suit whatever it is that you want. Red, green, blue flash, strobe, you can tie these to objects and power them by batteries. Most fascinating time exposures. You could have so much fun with a strip of uh, RGB uh, LEDs, especially with a battery pack. You could tie this to a hoop and put it at the end of a string, create some of the most fascinating effects you've ever seen. Like I said, uh, stroboscopic effects. Um, a neat one that I've done is I've actually taped this to a frisbee, powered the LEDs uh, at the center of the frisbee, so the center of uh, the weight balance is uh, correct, and then thrown the frisbee across the beach or throw it across the field, and then uh, once it falls, uh, illuminate a person. Just endless things. Let your mind run wild. You're painting with light. You know, instead of oil paints and paint brushes, I mean, these are your brushes. You're uh, doing time exposures. Your sensor sees nothing. You introduce the light that you want. You are the replacement for Mother Nature. In this sense, let me turn the light back on so you can see something here. There we go. Just a little remote control like this. And there's a little uh, RGB a uh, little sensor, remote sensor over there, just like a TV remote. Fascinating. You can roll these up into a loop. You can power them by batteries. Wonderful stuff. As I told you before in another video, uh, grab yourself a few feet of fiber optic cable. Okay, you can uh, use this to uh, paint with light, like using a, a large, uh, excuse me, a very powerful uh, LED flashlight. You tape it to the end of your fiber optics. You know, just a few strands like this. Get in the dark. Let me turn my light off again. And show you what I'm talking about. And turning off my LEDs. And what I'm doing is I'm actually using my fiber optics as a paintbrush. Say I have a nice dark scene and I just want to do illumination of one little spot on an object that I have right here. It's like I just want to illuminate this one little spot or I want to do a halo or something fantastical around the object. What I can do is I can tape uh, LEDs to a string and create vortex patterns. I mean you're painting with light. I mean these are your paintbrushes for time exposure photography. It's not all that difficult. I mean you just got to be thinking that well if I'm painting with light what is it that I could use as a brush? Um, Use these, uh, I highly recommend these. These are not cheap. This is the most powerful handheld flashlight that exists. It's a P2X a Fury. Actually, I think they've got one out now that's a little bit more powerful than this, but it's just insanely powerful. You can take a model out at night and, you know, instead of uh, illuminating something uh, with your speed light, now what you could do is you can just paint part of an object or model, say a tree, and you just want to illuminate certain branches. You can confine the light and illuminate what you want. Okay? Well, I don't want to illuminate the whole area or the whole model or the tree. You want to create mystery and intrigue. I mean, the part of professional photography is actually translating what is in your mind into the camera. And a lot of people are like, you know, I've got this neat thing in my head, but I don't know how to do it. It's like, well, when it comes to time exposures and... Uh, exposures once the sun sets, uh, you know, you are Mother Nature. You've got your paintbrushes. Just what's the best paintbrush that you need to translate what you want in your mind? I mean, I use multiple strobes, 
multiple speed lights, trigger the malls. One's pointing at the base of the tree, the other one's pointing at the model. Make them hidden, obviously. You don't want to see your speed lights. You want it to be a mystery. People see the photographs, they're like, oh my god, how did you do that? You know, how did you do this? Simple little devices like this during a time exposure, just fascinating. Wonderful, incredible things. Just go to the flea markets, just start looking at oddball stuff at uh, flea markets, things that generate light, things that uh, control light. Control is extremely important, obviously. Fiber optics. I mean, how important? Very important. Pinpoint light. So incredibly important for like product, small product photography, like for jewelry. And you have to ask yourself, you have to start thinking of your camera, as I mentioned before, like a time machine. And it's like, well, this is fascinating enough. I can think of how to use this in ABC, XYZ scenario. But what if I do a four, or a, what if I do a 10 second exposure and I actually rotate these in a circular manner? What sort of pattern will that translate onto the back of my sensor given a 10 second exposure? I'm going to need to stop it down a bunch, and I'm going to have to get this bright light out of the way because I don't want to create any really hot spots. Or it doesn't matter if I get it in there, I can just crop this out later. If you forget about it and you get the perfect shot. You know, think. Think not only of light, but also of time variables. You have to understand that your camera is a time machine. There's so many wonderful things you could do with it. So many wonderful things. People think, oh, well, you know, the light's got to be up for me to create these fascinating photographs. Well, no, it doesn't. I mean, some of the most fascinating photographs that intrigue the hell out of people are ones that I've taken. Um, I won an award for back in photography school. It didn't pay me anything other than uh, uh, a cake and a gift certificate. <laughs> it was still fun. Um, of painting with light, uh, using uh, speed lights, using strobes, using, of course, now, you know, back then, LEDs were something altogether different, and we didn't have LEDs back then, I'm starting to sound old, I mean, I'm only 42, but, uh, you know, if you only need one LED, tape all these off, you know, whip them around, start creating your own light, start thinking out of the box. You know, start thinking of time variables. What can I do? What are the possibilities? What sort of fantastical thing that I've actually seen that, you know, how do I actually do that? How do I translate what I've seen into uh, something that's translatable onto the film? What if I were to tape this onto a frisbee and throw it across the beach during a sunset shot? What if I were to tape this to the arms of a model and uh, have her do a little dance on the beach so that I could see her arms, but not her face, but at the last second, do a rear curtain flash shot of her face. I don't want to see her whole body. If I have her dance, I have her dance 10 feet across the beach with some LEDs strapped to each arm, and at the last second of a 10 second exposure, for example, I do a very low flash shot with a... Uh, with a cone hood on the front of the speed light so that it only illuminates her face. So I have a mysterious ghostly model with glowing arms who at the last step of the 10 second exposure her face is illuminated. People think, people are so daunted by these types of images and yet they're so simple. They're really not that hard. They really are not that hard. What's so difficult? Well I've done a 10 second exposure. I've taped some LEDs to her arm. Uh, both arms. I got a battery pack, you know, sticking basically down her ass crack. You know, battery crack, battery, battery feed in her ass crack uh, underneath her underwear. You know, I have her do a uh, a ten second jaunt across the beach, and at the last second, I've got a cone confiner hood on the speed light, and I do a rear curtain uh, rear curtain uh, shot. So at the end of the ten seconds, it flashes right in her face at a very uh, low light level. Beautiful shot, fascinating. Oh my god, you know, I see all those interesting things in my mind and you just have to plan them out, just like planning a trip to Florida or something. You know, it's not that difficult. You know, the best photographs, here's the real se secret of photography. The best photographs that wow the piss out of people aren't ones where like, oh god, there's a pretty picture, click. 
You know, some of them are. Very few, actually, but there are some. But the most beautiful photographs, the one people think, oh my god, that's so enchanting, it's beautiful, is a photograph that looks magical, it looks spontaneous, and yet the truth of the matter is that the photograph required uh, a spark of brilliance in the mind of the photographer and then like 10 minutes, well, how am I going to create this shot? And then he or she executes the shot. These are the award-winning photographs. They require very little setup. You know, a spark of brilliance. You know, uh, since you're an expert, you become an expert on you lose, using the tools of light and illumination. Flashlights, uh, strobes that are actually hidden in the bushes, multiple ones. How can I paint with light? It's a, uh, you know, just as the sun is setting, the sky is still illuminated, but the sun is down. Therefore, uh, the back of the camera sensor is my canvas to paint with however I want, with whatever tool that I want. You need to start thinking of this. I mean, this is really the premise and the secret of a lot of professional photography. And what's that secret? The big S word. Staged. It's staged. It means there's a little bit of pre-planning. Sometimes a lot of pre-planning. I mean, some of the shots are just extremely convoluted and you're like, oh my god, he had to go through 30 steps and set up this and set up that. And you know, it's like, oh, that's too much for me. And you know, it might be too much for you and you might be daunted by it, but some of the stuff that you think is really complex, I mean, you know, to get a wonderful shot, if you got to put five minutes of prep work into it, you know, how hard was it for me to, you know, I uh, use rubber bands to tape uh, yeah, a strip of LEDs on one arm and another strip of LEDs on another arm and stick the battery power pack, you know, in the ass crack of someone's underwear and go, well, I'm going to do a 10 second exposure at F29, um, ISO 400, have her do a 10 uh, second prance on the beach, and then I'm going to do a rear curtain sink with the speed lights with a confiner cone on the front and it's pointed at her face at a low power output. You might think that's complicated, but it's really not. It's actually simple. The big S word, staged. You know, think it out in your mind. It's like, well, how can I do that? The, the big thing in professional photography is taking what is in your head and executing it on the back of the image sensor. You want to screw around with it later in Photoshop, that's fine. I mean, but uh, as a true professional, you know, you need to be able to reproduce most of it anyway on your image sensor and it doesn't really require that much work a lot of it doesn't the stuff that you think is complicated is not so think about tools of light fiber optics leds especially start thinking about time exposure maybe experimenting with it maybe you're not interested in time exposure that certainly may be the case but I can guarantee you, you'll really have a lot of fun with it. I mean, you will. Grab some fiber optics and some LEDs and start experimenting and start uh, painting with light. You know, and uh, I would actually, you'd be really, really shocked at how much fun you have. I'm not interested in sucking the fun out of photography, for God's sakes. Like some of my professors and other people did. It's like, oh God, you're just sucking the fun out of everything. I'm trying to make things fun and interesting. And at the same time, you know, expand your horizons. This stuff is not that hard. Um, think about going to like Lowe's or Home Depot and getting an LED set. If you plan on doing this stuff and just thinking of all the stuff that you can do. You are Mother Nature, the light's in your hands and you've got every color of the rainbow here with this remote. Choose whatever color I want. Choose stroboscopic effects, flash effects, fade effects. Wow, that's awesome. How much more fun can you have with photography? This is only 25 bucks. That with the remote and everything. Cool stuff. Catch you later. Bye.